Hello everyone, Anthony Wood of Searchlight Simulations here. Today I will be bringing you the first part of a small tutorial series that is intended to assist the community with our new interactive defect detectors. These detectors are functional pieces in the game that will actually report the axle count, train speed, and report defective findings within reason, based upon what the user desires. This includes being able to configure what railroad you choose to be represented, but that is for a different video. What we'll be covering today is setting up a non-searchlight product to work with these detectors and function properly. This video isn't particularly scripted, so you'll be able to follow along with what I'm doing at real time. Alright, let's jump right into it. So first you'll want to navigate to your Railworks directory. Now this should be something that every user of this detector should already know where to find it. You can either find it through Steam, or you can just create a shortcut once you do find it and keep it on your desktop. It's always a good idea to do that. So once we're there, we'll just do something simple like the Kuju SD4-2. We'll open up our assets directory, navigate to Kuju in the sources, go to Rail Simulator US, and then I've already extracted some of the assets from the AP file. Now you can open the AP file with something like WinRAR or 7-Zip, and you should only extract the stuff that you need, or you can extract all of it. It depends on if you have mods for the stuff that's inside or not, because it will overwrite everything. Navigate through your Rail Vehicles folder to the SD40-2, and for this example I'll be using the black SD40-2. Continue uh, navigating into the engine directory, where you'll find the bin, the geo, and the DCSV, and all that stuff. Um, you'll have a Lua script called SD40-2 engine script.lua. You'll want to rename that extension to .lua.prev, and you can access that by going to View, if you have a Windows 10, going to Options, View, and then you'll want to find this little bit here. Uh, hide extensions for known file types. You want to uncheck that and then hit OK or apply. Then you can actually change the extension. It will come up with a prompt asking if it's all right that you are changing, that you know that you're changing the extension and it will could cause damage to the file. Hit yes, it won't cause any damage. In this script here that I have already renamed, it will actually be called this in the zip file that you'll have. It's called engine script modification.lua. You want to open that up. And for the Kuju SD40-2, you'll want to have something similar to this. The assets, Kuju, Rail Simulator US, Rail Vehicles, Diesel, SD40-2, default engine, whatever. You can uh, actually change that. In this case, I have this on the black instead of the default, so I just changed it to black. So for every engine that you're going to be doing, you'll have to make sure that this path matches where the actual Lua is. And then if your, your SD40-2 or whatever engine that you're using as a .out file, which is a compiled Lua, you want to make sure it says .out.prev. So you'll want to convert the .out file that it would normally be to a uh, .out.prev by changing the extension. Now one thing to be noted is that the engine script function might vary, and it does note this in the script. So if your engine has any uh, script control that is outside of the normal default function names, um, it will not work. So this this kind of eliminates some things such as the GP40 or sorry the GP20 by Repo and a few other locomotives. Uh, mostly stuff with advanced stuff, not so much advanced braking, but um, advanced controls and function calls that will it will break it. So they will not be compatible or be possible to be compatible with the defect detector. However, it shouldn't be that big of an issue. Um, unfortunately, it's a, unfortunately, it's a limitation of being able to modify somebody else's content. Um, whereas, you know, if you if you want to develop a new locomotive to be working with this, you can pretty much do the same thing here and then have it on top of your Lua script. And if you're experienced in Lua, you can actually make something that works with this script in inside of your own script. But I won't get into that. I am not a Lua programmer, and unfortunately, Kevin <laughs> has not transferred his knowledge of that to me. So once you get all that done, you want to save the Lua and you'll have it renamed to be the original Lua. So like if you open up the bin file for the locomotive, scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see um, an entry for the Lua script component. And it should match the same file name as your now newly modified Lua file. So we'll keep note of that of how it's routed to that locomotive. 
got your provider, your product, and then its subcategories leading up to that Lua script. We're doing the same thing with freight cars. And these should be always easy. You you won't really have freight cars with advanced uh, function calls, so you won't have to worry about it. But we'll go into here, and this one is really easy. You'll take your included rolling stock script modification Lua file and just drag it into whatever locom or sorry, whatever freight car that you're trying to modify. And this also works for passenger. You'll open up a bin file, the main bin file of the freight car. Go all the way down to the bottom, and you'll want to put your name of your script component down there. So in this case, let me uh, make the excuse me. Let me make the file uh, the window smaller so you can actually see. And take this, rename it, just so I can copy and paste. Paste that in here, and then you'll want to get the same. Uh, provider product and then path in so you want to type it in manually or you can do it automatically but basically you just want this you want kuju rail simulator all that up to wagon copy paste add the extension dot lua to it save the bin file now of course i'm using rw tools i recommend everybody uses rw tools this is a lot faster than going through sirs and then uncompiling it recompiling it just use rw tools it's free Save it, close it, and it is installed to your rail car now. It's really, really handy and really, really easy to do. Now, every every freight car that we've produced will have this included, so you won't have to worry about it. So everything should be good. And if for the, the rolling stock, it should be all set up. And one thing of note is if you're, you're rolling stock or your locomotive, is something other than like a six axle or four axle and you know granted most rolling stock will be a four axle except for passenger cars with six axle trucks you just change the uh, axle count in here so anywhere it says axle count you'll change it from four to six or eight or twelve or whatever variable you need it to be that way your detector is accurately reading everything out and you'll do the same thing with the locomotive Lewis script you'll see this thing here axle count this vehicle rail vehicle is six if you're doing something like a gp40-2 you want to change it to four and then you do this the same way for trailing locomotives so if it's a trailing locomotive or a pusher or dp or whatever it's not the controlled consist uh or it's not the controlled locomotive you just want to have that changed to four as well this will ensure that your detector is accurate every time it reads you out so that's it for this part and the next part will be the installing the detector itself into a route and i'll be showing that in the next video. Thanks.